Miss Bobbins. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Long Days. Here we are. We have my favorite guest of all time. It cannot get better than (laughs) OHD, Olivia Harlan Decker, my co-host. We have a show on BetMGM, which is a gambling network. It is. Um, you got to do your CrossFit <laughs> Daily Network. Okay? Yeah, it's totally cool. No, you need to whisper it. It's a gambling network. In this state, I don't know if you can say it. Can you mute that? Because it's not legal. <laughs> it's funny when you're like, people are like, where yeah. can we watch your show? You're like, uh, move to New Jersey? Yeah. And you can watch it. No, you can get it everywhere. It's a podcast. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just not legal to gamble everywhere. It's but not, more, but it will be. It will be. Yeah. If we if we have something to do with it, it will be. Yeah, we're we're gonna... out there spreading the word yeah. of uh, of gambling. No, it's a sports podcast. She's a sports journalist. Yeah. Comes from a line of sports people. Yeah, <laughs> sports people. Your grandfather is a sports person. <laughs> he, I mean, is. he was a very important sports person. Yeah. He's 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 I was uh, esteemed. Yeah. In the Green Bay area, he's esteemed. <laughs> Which is really hard to do. It's, Have you been to Green Bay? It's I've lofty. Nev- what is Green Bay? Is Green so, Bay Wisconsin? It is. Okay. You knew that. You know, I know a lot of things, but I don't pay attention to Green... I don't pay attention to that area. Okay. I just see cheese heads. I know Brett Favre showed his dick to a cheerleader that he shouldn't have done. I know he takes painkillers, and I know now he sells socks. That's all I know about Brett Favre. Oh, and he also sells some sleeve that you put on when you're old to throw a football. Copper fit. Copper fit, yeah. I have the socks. Do you have them? Oh, they're incredible. Yeah. For long flights. Can't recommend it enough. Is that what they're for? They're compression socks, yeah. Do you have bad circulation? I think everyone does on a long flight. That's why my, yeah. uh, my that's why my your ankles get puffy, yeah. yeah or I, after heels, like a night out in heels, I'll come back. It's super sexy. Yeah. You 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 really disrobe all the the glitz and glamour you just had going on. Yeah. Put on the copper fit socks. <laughs> <laughs> that's when things get popping. And yeah. but truly, when your feet get swollen yeah. from wearing high heels all night, it's, that's what you got to do. You put on copper fits. Yeah, and your I know you must have love that. Problem. that. Yeah. yeah, your husband must love those. Yeah, when you got yeah. Your the retainer, fit. the mask. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, that's what I've, uh, you know, I've done a couple TV shows and the makeup room is always funny how different it is for guys and girls. Oh, yeah. Like um, on my old show on Fusion, me and Pedro, we were co-hosts. We'd go in, it would be like 30 seconds. I hate makeup, so I used I to hide. I bet Pedro would wear a little makeup. He put a little bit more than me, yeah. yeah. He's a little bit, he was a little, he put a little bit more than me. He's a beautiful man. He's a beautiful man. <laughs> And, uh, but I would hide from the makeup lady. Okay. I would like, cause we were a live show. Yeah. So I hated it cause it would like burn my eyes and I just didn't want to wear makeup. So I would like hide. So I'd weak. pretend like I was taking a long dump and then I'd run out and it was like a running thing that they'd catch me in the hallway and throw something yeah. on. But then Mariana, my other co-host, she would come in like, and th- this is why I'm asking you because you're a woman, you're, you've been in TV and everything. She would come in like the, the morning before. She'd come in like <laughs> 2 a.m. Yeah. And like we'd come in oh, it takes at hours. five and she'd still, they'd still be in the hair phase mm-hmm. and they put hair on. They'd be <laughs> yeah. adding hair to her hair. Yeah. So whenever you see a woman on TV, there's like fake hair there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Almost more times than not, you can. Now this is all real. In fact, I just chopped three inches off. This, I have a bob. Right. This is a What's short a bob? bob. A bob? Yeah. Like a short, this is not really a bob. Okay. But to me, this feels very light, but no, it's a. Uh, it's such a process. I've sat in so many makeup chairs and I end up, I bring my own makeup and I will go to the bathroom and I'll kind of do my own. I just, I trust, you know, I trust my own hand. You're a little bit of a control freak. <laughs> 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 no, I just, I've, I've been, I've been on camera since I was 14, 15, as you've seen. Yes. And I did the whole pageant circuit. So like yes. you learn how to do makeup and I just feel like I like my own makeup the best. Yeah. I would actually love to show that clip at some point if we can. Oh, ouch. It's her. We we went on our show and yeah. we showed like our first, like 
forays into our fields. So we showed my first set yeah. and on our show, and we showed Olivia's first um, on air on air hit. on air segment. <laughs> I guess it was for your middle school. <laughs> I thought I when you watch it, you feel like you're watching like someone who's at least thirty talking about cupcakes <laughs> outside of a store. And then she, she told us after she's fifteen years old. Fifteen. So are you like Morgan Freeman? Were you born forty? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because you report that like a what you, you it was your. I thought I was watching Barbara Walters. Yeah. Your presence was like that of an older person. If you had told me at that point I was channeling Barbara Walters, I would have been so excited. That's <laughs> enough. That is one of my idols, Baba Wawa. And yeah. I read her book. I read Don Lemon's book. I loved, and at that point, Don Lemon was kind of early in the game. Yeah. I just, I loved journalists. Yeah. Like, I, and I really wanted to go into news before sports because my whole family was in sports, as you mentioned, and I was. Believe it or not, a very, very smart kid. Like, really good at school. I can see that. I swear I get dumber by the day now. Like, yeah. well, it's like common you're sense. Well, because you hanging around me. That's a problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're killing brain cells every minute. No, I, I do. I say to my husband all the time, I used to be really smart. <laughs> and now I feel like I just catch myself just saying dumb things a lot. I don't yeah. know. this. The highlights. See, this isn't all real. Yes. So it's the highlights are seeping through. Um, but yeah, so I... I just was like, man, I'm I'm smarter than sports, you know? Like, I'm yeah. going to do news. And I would tell my parents, I want to be in Syria doing a report with bullets flying over my head. And I want to be, like, in war-torn countries. And that's what I wanted to do. And I did an internship at a news station. You would station. blend in just fine in Afghanistan. <laughs> You'd be able to get the report straight from the Taliban. They wouldn't know. They wouldn't I know. as a foreigner. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> uh, uh, Ali Akbar? Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm just this, I'm just a undercover. Uh, yeah, you'd be able to. You'd be yeah, yeah. Your father was probably uh, like, I can't do his voice. His, her, your father's Kevin Harlan, mm-hmm. who's uh, one one of my, he is one of my favorite announcers. And I know when I said that, you thought I was probably just blowing smoke. I did, and I but still I, do. I don't. I okay. love him because okay. I'm a big basketball fan. Yeah, I didn't even know he did football. Yeah. Like, but he does, and now I've heard him on football games. Yeah. Now that I've, you know, I've got to watch every football game now because of our yeah. show. Yeah, and I've heard him on football, but like I know him from TNT. Yeah, I know him from. Um, and he, that's, that's he calls really a damn good game where he's gotten more traction, and he's the voice of that NBA 2K game. So, like NBA players now have been playing this video game where he's the voice since they were ten. Yeah, and it's that's how they know him and that's, that's trippy and then, and then he like, calls their real game yeah, yeah 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 but it's like you work so hard and I've, i was telling you last night that the nfl is really what he wants to be remembered for and go out on he just loves the nfl and uh but we're like i don't know if you can walk away from your uh your bread and butter here because yeah. that's that's kind of your main gig yeah you whether can. you like it or not yeah sometimes what is it life happens when you're making other plans yeah is that I what mean, they say that's what john lennon said i think right okay. is that what john lennon said yeah, life happens when you make. I think life happens when you're waiting for your phone to charge. That is true. That is true. <laughs> That's when those are the moments you live. But uh, it's still it's, uh, that's still a pretty good gig yep. to uh, to to do basketball. And your grandfather, just because we didn't mention it, because we're just flowing. Yeah. But your grandfather was the CEO of the Packers. Yes. What does that mean? Okay, I'm glad you asked that. Yeah. So there are 30 NFL teams. And, oh wait, are there 32 or 30? You better NBA. know this, OHD. And I always mix this up. 32 yeah. NFL teams. We can cut that part. I want to cut that part. It's <laughs> no, 32 it's or 30. I don't even remember how many states there are. 32, okay. They're always changing it. Did they add Hawaii to football? There's 32 teams. <laughs> there are 32 teams in the NFL yeah. and the Green Bay Packers. We should get rid of one. We don't need the Jets. <laughs> it, it's like... I don't know. Although they won, but yeah. we don't. Yeah. Okay. With Mike White, the Mike White game. And my dad had that game. But yeah. we weren't watching it. We were busy. We were running around New York. Yeah, we were drinking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there are 32 NFL teams, and the Packers are the only one with no owner, which is wild. And that's why, see, we're so proud of that. Like, it's so cool that it's owned by the city. Taxpayer money pays for the team. Wait a second. Yeah. I didn't know Wisconsin was communist. <laughs> yeah. The team is owned by the people? Yeah. So how does anything get done? Like by town meeting, just a bunch of cheese heads standing up. But I want more cheese curds on I my mean, pizza. It's funny you say that. They have a shareholders meeting, mm-hmm. and it's very it's a lot of pageantry. Mm-hmm. But you can't you can buy stock. So like a lot of people buy stock and they frame it in their house. Like it doesn't mean much. But don't tell that to these people because they'll wear like owner. Because they live in Wisconsin and they have very little else. 
It's like one of their main sources of pride. Like I'm taking you to a Packer game, so I'm you can see go. how great it is. I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna. But before yeah. I go, do I have to get really, really fat? Just to blend yeah, in. Yeah, I okay. mean, you have to just come with an appetite. Come with Let's an say appetite. that. Come with an appetite. This isn't a cheese curd you guys eat, or che- we eat the cheese curds, and that's like illegal in some states. It Did you know be. that? Yeah, it should be. It's, it's they have it in Montreal too. I think that's what they put on poutine. Yeah, yeah, similar. And it's only legal in certain places because that's how potent it is. I think it's like oh. what is it like? Cheese shit. It's just fried cheddar. Fried. Ch- it's fried cheddar. That's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah okay. So it can't be mozzarella because then that's a mozzarella stick. Right. Or as you say, mozzarella. Mozzarella stick. <laughs> Is that a mozzarella stick? Yeah. And you can dip it. I like when it comes with like a ground mustard dip. That's really good. Wow. Um, sometimes it comes with marinara, which I'm not a fan of. Right. Um, ranch is typical. Right. It's just right. for more dairy. Right. To put on. More it. dairy on dairy. Yep. Yeah. But no, that's so the, the Packers. That's American, baby. The Packers, everyone, they're so proud to be shareholders, these fans. So they'll have a shareholders meeting inside the bowl of Lambo. So one day a year, all these people, they tailgate for it. I mean, it's a big deal. So it's a very proud community, but they have a president and CEO in place of an owner, and that right. was my grandpa. So it's an elected position instead of buying a team, which I always thought was cool. Very cool. So the people elected him. The board. So the he board. served on the board, oh, the executive okay. board, and then they so pick who's a the board? Oh, so, so Okay, so it's like any other company, mm-hmm. but it's public. Yeah. And so the, there's a board, and then they select it. So they tailgate the meeting. <laughs> not, Lam- not the board. <laughs> not the board, but the shareholders. The, sh- the shareholders. So like yeah. 18,000 people show up. Yeah, something like that. And they're the shareholders. Yeah. And they tailgate that, and mm-hmm. then they go to a meeting about decisions about the team. They, Hammered. They basically, <laughs> they don't make decisions. They Then the president, my grandpa, now right. Mark Murphy is the president of the Packers, they'll run through uh, financials. Mm-hmm. They'll run through uh, structural changes. Mm-hmm. They'll run through uh, team changes, draft. Mm-hmm. You know, it's cool. It's it's Again, it's a lot of pageantry. It's a lot of being proud of the team. But when you say pageantry, is that uh-huh. just a politically correct way of saying we just make the people feel like they're involved, but we just let them get drunk and they <laughs> yell shit, and we're like, okay, you guys, we'll make those decisions, and then you put a cheese head on them and kick them out, and then the, the adults handle it. I think that's what I'm picking up on pageant. Yeah, that's what you say. Pageantry. It's pageantry. No, it's just it's we just all special, the team, guys. and everyone gets to be involved, and yeah. everyone feels like they were at the shareholders meeting. Emphasize everyone feels like mm-hmm. they were part of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's darling. It yes. really is darling. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, my name is Steve. I live I'm in from Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm a shareholder of the team. Uh, here's the deal. Brett Favre has got. We got. Play, can we do more play options, please? Thank you, Kyle. Get some more cheese cards. Give me some more cheese cards, you prince of. I don't endorse this. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> this show for you is, yeah. yeah, you may have to do a podcast forever after this. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> no, no this I'll, is I'll listen to you and laugh at you, but uh, no, it's. You got it down good. Yeah, as long as you let it come out of my <laughs> we do mouth. do this a lot on our yeah, show. We yeah, we do it a lot. She just listens to me mm-hmm. and she goes, she laughs or shakes her head. No one like, knows if I agree either. That's the ah. way to do it. Yeah, that's the way to do it. But that is a nice pedigree. Yeah. That is a nice pedigree yeah. for you. Yeah. So, but you didn't play sports. No. You did not. Even though I you're... mean, I did. I, literally, I was in the fun girls basketball league, which sounds a lot more risque than it should have at eight years old. But uh, no, I was a horrible athlete. What is the fun girls basketball league? <laughs> just like it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> just like doesn't matter yeah. who won. Yeah, yeah, it was just like a kids basketball league for yeah. girls. But like I'd wear bows in my hair, and I once scored on the wrong basket. Ooh, yeah, that's not... don't tell my husband. I don't think he knows that. Yeah, wouldn't so, have married me. I'm, yes. I'm not a breeder. <laughs> yeah, I'm tall. You're tall. Yeah, yeah. your kids a pro- is a good chance. Yeah, if they're straight. <laughs> That they'll play basketball. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know. No, you don't have to I'm be straight kidding. to play no, basketball. No, you don't have to be straight to play basketball anymore, no. Um, your your husband is a basketball player. He is. He's a professional basketball he player. He is. You know, what's crazy is he was my favorite player before I even met you. See, now no, I'm lying. I'm right. <laughs> now I'm lying. Yes. Now I'm lying. I was yes. rooting for Duke. I'm sorry. I was rooting for Duke. You know what's funny about that, yeah. too? So that was 2015. They played in the national championship, Wisconsin against Duke. And I was working on an ACC show mm-hmm. um, in Atlanta. Didn't know my husband yet. You know, we, we didn't meet for a couple years after that. And I found a clip of, like, the day of the game. And I'm saying all these reasons why Duke's going to win and, like, go Duke and all this stuff. <laughs> and my future <laughs> husband's played in that game. <laughs> and it's just life-changing. When you win a national championship, that's 
that's life changing. Yeah. Like truly. And I didn't realize how much that bothered him like until later. And we'll be in the airport sometimes, Giannis, and people come up and be like, go oh, blue devils. And he's just like, the motherfucker. It's like, it's, it's painful. Yeah. It kind of doesn't matter what you do after that. It's like, People know if you're a national champion. Oh, yeah. And yeah. college, that's the, all the pro athletes that you, you can tell their allegiances to their alma mater. Yeah. Always. And that, because that's where they cared. That's when they really cared. Yeah. That's when they weren't playing for the money. Um, we have guests all the time on yeah. our show, and we ask them about that. It's like, when was truly the most fun you had playing your sport? It's always college. College. Yeah. So it does mean a lot. That's actually pre pretty funny that mm -hmm. you were like rooting for the Blue Devils. Yeah. Well, I just It was better for our show. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm all about clicks. You're about clicks. <laughs> so whatever it is, sorry. But Sam Decker is your husband. He is. He was on Wisconsin. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly your yeah. husband. There's no proof. I haven't seen a, a marriage certificate. <laughs> I've only... You I've only I... seen his comments for me to keep my hands off his wife. Yes, yes, yeah, he comments was, that. Yeah, he's like, stay away from my wife. And then, like, random, <laughs> this is like a Wisconsin hate show. I do not mean random people from, like, Nina, Wisconsin being like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you tell him, Sam. <laughs> you tell him, Sam. Um, and then he also, one time, BetMGM tweeted, it was really funny, BetMGM oh, tweeted, yeah. like, who would, uh, which celebrity could you beat up in a boxing match? Yeah. And he was like, I'll beat the shit out of Giannis Pappas. <laughs> And I tweeted back. I said, "Listen, Sam, I will box the hell out of your genitals. I will, f I mean, because you know he's six nine, yeah. dude. So if we fought, I'd be right at his dick, and I would just, I would, and I bite. I'm a biter. So you know, I don't know what kind of rules. I hate picturing this whole. Thing. I'm just saying, depending on the rule set, if it was a straight boxing match, mm -hmm. I'd give the advantage to him. Okay. If it was jail rules." Oh God. I'm going to win because I'm going to bite and I'm going to bite his dick hard and twist or I'm going to yank and twist. I'm going to just, I'm focusing on his genitals and I'm taking them out. If the fight took place in this sh shamrock of a studio, <laughs> shim sham of a studio, I feel like you'd be jumping. What are you talking about? We're at Fox Studios right now. Look how beautiful this is. Oh, yeah, God. we're in my old apartment, <laughs> um, which clearly needs a little bit of a renovation. I think we have some water damage behind our producer, Jesse. <laughs> yeah. And my bathroom has no... I can't have female guests on the show anymore without a renovation. <laughs> we've had how, this, We've had one other female guest. Yeah. And every time I got to warn them about the bathroom, I'm like, there's no mirror. It's it fell out. It's not bad. And I, not think, bad. I think you like to think I'm fancier than I am. Um... Like, I, I can get down right before we started recording. I do it for recording. the show. Yeah. I do anything for clicks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was telling you, we were just talking about early in our careers, which the, I think a lot of parallels, actually, and it's it's cool, and I'm actually kind of fascinated of anyone who's made it in their industry, and not saying I have, but the way I started to now, we were saying life's pretty comfortable now. Like, when you're that hungry early in your career, and you will just do anything, you'll drive through the night, you'll work for no money, you'll... Yeah. All that, and I was telling you, I would just have a bunch of these nice blazers hanging up in my little Jeep, and I'd change in the back of my car. I'd do my makeup in a gas station bathroom, and I mean, the, the amount of places I've put makeup on has not always been in a makeup chair, like your right. fancy studio right. show, Right. but it is. It's uh, You ever throw makeup on in like a gas station? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? You should see the looks when you go in looking busted. You come out looking nice. <laughs> Smoke machine. Yeah. It's like that scene in uh, Breakfast Club where <laughs> Ali Sheedy comes out. and You know, she she gets made up by, uh, you know, Breakfast Club? Yeah. Maud yeah. Ringwall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, you've, you've come up the ranks. You've yeah. You've come up the ranks. I had a really quick start, though. Like, my, my start in the industry was pretty unprecedented. Did was, your family, did the family help you? Well, was obviously, the name? Yeah. yeah, it was obviously that. Yeah. Um, no real, no audition, nothing like that. Just people picking up the phone and calling. And <laughs> yeah, that's, everyone should just have famous parents. That's what they should do. <laughs> but it helps a little That's bit. my career advice, kids. Does it help a little? You know, no. There's no shame in it. No, I'll no? tell you this. Yeah. I'll tell you this. In fact, if anything, now I feel like it gets brought up more. Um, and I have a different last name now. No, I keep both. You probably noticed. Harlan Deck. I, <laughs> I love the OHD. I know you do. I, I'm, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like pushing that into branding. Yeah, OH, I, know. I always call her OHD. I need a logo. Yeah, OHD is yeah. a kind of like it's yeah, a it's fun good. acronym. Yeah. yeah. No, so my first job, I was out of University of Georgia. I was graduating a semester early. How much drinking did you do at Georgia? That was hefty. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. I was a pro. I know you. You you're the type. You throw the blazer on. You walk around with a book on your head. Yeah. Because you uh, you 
You love told Jackie us before Kennedy. we started, you love Jackie Kennedy. You used to walk around with a book in your hand. Mm-hmm. You're an achiever. You work hard. Yeah. But I, you're a girl who went to Georgia, so I think <laughs> when the cameras are off and someone slides a vodka tonic in front of you, <laughs> I think you know how to. I think you know how to shake your tail feather. I can shake my tail feather. Yeah. Uh, but we called it. Uh, see, now kids are doing the the what is it? The WAP. <laughs> the, it, well, the WAP de- is old. It's definitely not that. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's that without the fat uh, jingle. <laughs> no, I mean, like, what was the, the Georgia wa- Georgia was so fun. Like, all my girlfriends were bartenders. All my guy friends were the doormen. Um, I, oh. I once had, my little brother was like a freshman in high school. He came to visit me, and they said, just give us something. Like, we just need a show on the cameras. He had his library card. I mean, it, George, <laughs> it was, there were, it was lawless. Yeah. It was so, I don't know what it's like now, but it was so fun. Like, Highly recommend going to a big state school and going to the SEC. That's what I brought up because I know Georgia, Georgia's a party school. It is. Georgia, Florida. Uh, yeah, Florida's is Florida. And that's, is that where the list ends? Just the I two. I think it's those two yeah. are the biggest. Well, no, there's a lot. Penn State Bama. has a reputation for being a party school. Even yeah, though it's like yeah. A, no, the, the whole Big Ten, yeah. the whole, I don't know, Pac-12 so much. They're too smart. Right. Um, but were you a cheerleader in high school or college? In high school, high school. not college. Yeah. yeah. High school, yeah. But you um, were not a mean cheer. You were not a mean girl cheer. No, yeah. I told you I was woman of the people. I was. Right. I was really more of a choir nerd, musical theater nerd. Right. I, th- I feel oh, like that were, was more my people. You were in. Th- you were a theater gig. Yeah, I was. Here, you, you. I watched you kick a field goal. Yeah. Which was very impressive that you ki- you got it. You got it through the uprights. Yeah, I'm dead center, if I you, remember correctly. Dead exactly. Yeah, I mean, don't mean to brag, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I mean, no net. It was right. No, it was really that was impressive. You've I've watched you sing the national anthem. You yeah. can sing. I love singing the national anthem. Yeah. yeah. So you you were a theater geek, mm-hmm. and you can sing. Yeah, and I feel like that kind of goes into what I do now. I mean, it's performing. It's uh-huh. on camera, um, and voice work, right? Yeah, voice is important. Yeah. Yeah, it's very important. As you said that, your voice really channeled something. Yeah. I don't know what you just well, did. Um, <laughs> well, we grew up. You know, it's funny because. You don't know it. You don't know it until you do TV. You don't know how much goes in yes. to being on camera. Like when I was doing TV, which TV doesn't mean what it used to mean, but when I was doing TV, because like everything's kind of undressed now. You yeah, know, with it the is. Internet. But I, when I did that TV show, I realized that like when you're on camera, um, any slight move <laughs> is like exaggerated yeah. by like a million. Yeah. So you're in this little screen, and it's like if if you see me in real life and we're talking and I do this, mm-hmm. it wouldn't even your mind wouldn't even pick no. it up. Your mind doesn't even pick it up. Or if I did this, you wouldn't even think about it. But when you're on camera, and if you do this, mm-hmm. if like we're in the middle of the segment, I'm on set, and we have a guest, and I just do this, it's people like, people are like, is he on crack? Yeah. <laughs> it's like you can't. You have. I would be. I remember we'd be like we'd have a guest on. We'd be in the middle of the segment, and I'd have this itch on my nose. And I would just leave it. Yeah. And I would just, because you can't itch. That's so painful. Then your eyes start watering. Yeah. You just, and guys with beards, you guys do that a lot. It's this. Yeah. But you can't do it. On camera, really you're like, you have to stay stiff and you have to present. You have mm-hmm. to perform even when you're not saying anything. Yeah. Just knowing that you're on camera. And then the voice is a big part, especially of being like a reporter or especially a sports announcer. Your dad, you told me he like affects his voice. Yes. The voice is so huge. It's huge. And I, you always think, like that's just their natural voice, yeah. but your dad plays it up a little bit. You said, "Well, it's it's when he doesn't he's on go TV. home and say, kids, time for dinner.' Like, no, but when a new boyfriend comes around, I notice the voice comes out. So that, it's and the I'm gun one too, of, probably. I'm one of four. No gun. <laughs> There's yeah. no gun. No gun. No. Wisconsin. You guys don't carry. Well, I grew up in Kansas City. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. but he uh, a new boyfriend would come around. He'd say, "Hi, Kevin Harlan. Nice to meet you." And we're like. He got formal with him. Mm-hmm. Like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Look out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We grew up with Marv Albert. Mm-hmm. So Marv Albert was like, and then Boston And their has, voices are kind of similar. A lot of people th- it think is that. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be listening. I can pick it up pretty quick, but they're not far off if you're just barely listening to a game. Your dad's a little bit more, uh, he's a little bit more fast paced. Yeah. It's like Marv Albert on Adderall. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit more. And Marv Albert without the biting the prostitutes probably. <laughs> That's when, I mean. See, I'm not saying anything. Yeah, but I'm just saying Marv Albert did bite a few prostitutes. If you say so. It's in the news. And that was back when you could do that and you could make a comeback from that. 
<laughs> Those were the days where you could just bite a prostitute. The whole media could see the bite marks on her body. And then you just uh, readjust your toupee and go out there for the fucking Sunday night game with Walt Frazier. <laughs> I mean, so those were the days. You're born in the wrong era. Huh? Yeah, I mean, he just. I mean, I've you know, I'll never have that problem. But I mean, those were the days where you could come back from that. Yeah. He got grandpa. He must be looking. At, he must be like, thank God I missed the Me Too era, because I mean, but isn't it funny? Like some guys get fired over tweets and stuff. Mark, yeah. Marv Albert retired with grace. He re- this is my last game, and everyone was like tearing up. And New York was going. That's a voice of a generation. And some poor prostitute was going like, I'm missing a nipple. <laughs> because of this guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just saying. I'm not saying anything that's not in the press. Officially, this is coming you, from Giannis Papas. You made Pappas. me laugh a lot. That might have been it. That might have been it. Oh, my God. That was good. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, forgive me for... I have a sentimental attachment to Marv Albert because yeah. I grew up watching those Knicks games on black and white TVs, the Trent Tucker days, Rory Sparrow, etc. But you know what? Forgive me if I prefer... Kevin Harlan, because he doesn't bite prostitutes. <laughs> He's a family man. He is a family man. He's a man. family man, goddammit. He's super clean cut, too. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, like, in all seriousness, watching him at work as a kid and then watching my grandpa at work as a kid, like, everyone always asks, well, surely you got into this because of them. And as I mentioned, I was really wanting to get into news and because um, I was too smart for sports, obviously, like too much in the cranium. And right. I thought, sports? <laughs> but you have to How be, easy? you have to, no, you have to be yeah. smart. That's another thing people yeah. don't know. Yeah. It's like, sports you guys have, you have to do a lot of research. A lot of research. A lot of research. Yeah. Like, and football's not easy. And as a woman, they'll really call you out if you mess something up. Right. Because really a lot of bigots don't want you there anyway. Yeah. 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 And Which, why would they? Yeah, well, I don't taking understand Taking up space. That. I'm just taking up space. Yeah, but you know, we did, we talked about that on our show. And I don't get that. I don't get that. Even my wife, and I'll, I don't want to throw her under the bus a little bit, but whenever there's like a woman reporter, she's like, why is there, uh, why is there a woman reporter? I'm like, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Britt, you're a woman. I need to talk with her. Yeah, you need to talk with her. Yeah. She's changed her tune. Okay. But. No, I, look, but I, I get you, because yeah. my family too, and we're mostly women. I'm one of three girls, and my mom, and we watch a lot of sports in our house. And. It's horrible. You'll catch yourself doing it, and I'll say, I'll say, stop it. That's not nice. Because I'm, <laughs> no. When you see a woman on TV, you'll say, boy, her hair looks awful, or God, she looks tired, or her makeup's, boy, is that the best outfit they could put her in? We say it. We never say it about men. We never say it about men. Women do that. Men do it too. Do they? They'll say woof. Like, uh, you know, I'll be at a bar I've and I'll never, hear I've, my my brother-in-law, my friend, my guy friends. I'll hear them be like. Or the alternative, and they'll be like, whoa, check out those. Or, that's yeah. what I hear. Yeah. yeah, that's what I hear. And I'm like, yeah. or we could turn up the volume and listen to her report because she worked really hard on yes, it. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, guys seem to respect Doris Burke. You guys I, love Doris Burke. But I don't know You're why right. guys, Doris yeah, Burke gets a pass. And I like, and I don't know. She's a goat. She's great. Yeah. I like Doris Burke, but she's great, but there's a lot of other great reporters. Yeah. OHD, Erin <laughs> Andrews. Right? Uh, okay. Are we just throwing out names Katie now? Katie Nolan. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of who else. Laura Rutledge. Laura Rutledge. I love it. Yeah. I I don't understand. I We did we talked about it on our show, but I, we should talk about it here. I love it. I don't understand why guys have a problem with, like, isn't that cool that women know about sports? Isn't that the dream to, like, hang out with your wife or your girl and, like, watch the game? That's, like, the best possible scenario. Obviously, networks are doing it to get women more interested in sports. I'm just being, you know, because like 52%. You think? Of, I think there's a little bit of that. Also, I think it's because guys look like looking at women. That's a tough one. Like, I don't know what the network's motive is. Um, I'm sure I tr- it's pure. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's very pure and it has nothing to do with thinking about demographics. Well, de- okay, demographics are huge, but I think that... I mean, that's 52% of the population that could tap into. And I, like when I was at ESPN, it was always a thing that especially with college football. Because if you went to a college, male or female, you're a fan of that team, right? So why are we just so trying to cater to our male audience? And the average football fan is a Southerner male in their 50s. Like, statistically, that is the college football fan. Overweight. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't weigh them. It's America. I just ran the test. Yeah. It's America. (laughs) And... But then we found out that really a lot of women, especially with college football, kind of more than NFL, I think, 
really watch college football. And okay. um, so then we, we said, let's let's make our stories also just appealing to anyone. So when I was conducting a story, when I was getting ready for a college football game, I would think of my mom, who is a college football fan, an NFL fan. She knows football, but she also just really likes the game and wants to hear more about the players. So I'd be like, man, this kid, uh, he grew up in an orphanage. He was adopted by this family. Uh, His brother had cancer his well you know whatever is the hardship that led to the 13 moment. assault charges uh God, drinking on campus. sorry there are so many deshaun watson i'm sorry it's 22 <laughs> alleged 22 active cases alleged active alleged well i guess it's active cases of allegations once you get to 22 you could assume maybe at least <laughs> seven or maybe true and that's probably seven too many seven too many yeah. 22. Anyways, but Is he I on just, the field? No, but the Texans kept him past the deadline. They did, yeah. So they could have gotten rid of him, and they kind of just want to play with their food a little bit and see what happens. Because yeah. really, if, if play with their food and I'm serious, if, it's going to depend on the legal action that takes place now. Right, right, right. But they don't want to get rid of him. He's a great player. He's a great player. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. did that sum that up? <laughs> it summed that up real nice. Yeah, when you have a little, t- yeah, there's a little bit more motivation to sweep it under the rug. It's just hard <laughs> to sweep 22. I bet you they went into a meeting with him and they're like, Deshaun, 22? okay, we have a few brooms. We don't have 22 brooms. We have a rug, we got brooms. Yeah. But we don't have 22 brooms. It's hard to swipe 22 under the rug. It is. Yeah, we can swipe one or two. So they've got to hope that these all go away. Yes. Um, so that is a good point. That's a fair point. So yeah. you're saying that, there were already a lot of, especially with college football, there yeah. were a lot, and that's true. Because, you know, I'm biased because I'm from New York. We don't have like a college. Right, yeah, you Northeasterners, yeah. you're not into college football. We don't, what do we have? Like St. John's, we got like Rutgers, we got like yeah. Wagner. Yeah. We don't have any like, we're dominated by pro sports in yeah. New York. Yeah, but Giannis, yeah. I know you spent time in the South. It's, just last week we had uh, Larry Olmstead, the author of Fans, Why Sports Makes You Happier, Healthier, and yes. More Understanding. He said if you go into the Alabama bookstore, you can buy an Alabama coffin. Like, it's <laughs> that's what we're dealing with yes. here. Yes, you're It right. truly is. I Even growing up in the Midwest in Kansas City, like, the Jayhawks were into college basketball, really into college basketball. We're not really into college football, I got to be honest. I didn't grow up a huge, diehard college football fan. I grew up an NFL fan. Mm-hmm. I go to the South, I go to UGA, yes. we are really good. And I was like, whoa, these people are diehard and their grandfathers at this tailgate and their aunts and uncles all went here and their kids are, I mean, whoa. Yes. And I, I, I a good friend of mine is Nate Bargatze, who's a Southern comic. And he's the one who really enlightened me to that because he's from um, Tennessee, Old Hickory. Yeah. And he wears Vanderbilt. He has a thing where he'll have- That's he, his team? Vanderbilt's his team. He didn't okay. go to school, but like- It's an unfortunate th- team. To, yeah, to they back. don't win a lot, but he's no. loyal to them. But he And he would say it like that, dude, loyal, because um, <laughs> he's from the South, yeah. and he's a heck. But um, <laughs> he's the one that kind of enlightened me to the fact of how big wow. college sports are. And like he was like the first person I became really good friends with who was from an area that wasn't like Northeast Corridor or the coast okay. where it's more professional. And yeah, I mean, college football is the pro team in a lot of those 100%. areas. I mean, I remember I was in Columbus, right? Like Ohio State is like, that. those stadiums are 18, 20,000. Yeah. That's like- the, And they have the Browns. They're more popular they than the, the Browns. They have the Bengals. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. They, uh, it, it's- if you think about think about Nebraska as well, there is no pro team. The whole wait state. a second, I haven't done that ever in my <laughs> life. So let me just try to. Wow. Yeah. I just is I it like there to, yet? I just like to take a moment when I've never done something to take to note. Uh, wow, I'm thinking about yeah. Nebraska. Yeah. They have the University of Nebraska. Mm-hmm. They have one of the best game day atmospheres. The team struggling has been for the last couple of years, but that is their pro team. They yeah. don't they don't care about anything else. You're right. In fact, a lot of people from Nebraska, their NFL team is the Packers. Yes. Yeah. I get it. And so families, women, mothers, sisters, daughters are into this and they were underserved. That's what you're that's that's a fair I think point. At some point. Yeah. I think at some point they were, but then So then it started there you think it started with college and maybe. then women started just you started yeah. seeing more women reporters. And then it was just let's let's make our storytelling interesting to everyone. Right. And let's really story tell. And that's my favorite part of the business. And I'm not doing sideline reporting now, but that I mean that was that was the best part. But now on a platform like a podcast, that's all I do, right. and that's wonderful. Right. Well, that speaks to how the mediums changed a little bit. Yeah. But I'll just tell you from a guy's perspective, I don't understand the complaints. <laughs> Women, they, they know their stuff. You guys know your stuff. Yeah. You guys are if sports you've made fans. it that far, you do. Yeah. You, you're sports fans, 
being a reporter, you don't have to be a guy. To, like, if you're covering guy sports, you don't have to be a guy to be a reporter. <laughs> What's I don't understand. Like, why the sexism? Also, would you rather look at Aaron Andrews or would you rather look at uh, Tony Saragusa? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I'm not into bears. <laughs> You know, he's a bear. In the gay community, he'd be called a bear. Well, but and I'd TV, like to look at Aaron Andrews. It's a visual medium. And it's a visual medium. And kind of at the end of the day, there's male or female. I mean, you, you got you to gotta look good. You got to look good. And the female reporters often do, they look decent. They look very good. They're de- and But, you know, so do the guys. Yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> but I get it. It's, so yeah. You're serving a mostly male audience. It helps yeah. if the women are somewhat attractive. Well, I don't think it's to please our male audience. I think it's just to look good on TV. I I'm really sure do. it's a very pure motivation. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm think sure. like when I would go on air and I mean Brad I'm, Pitt is Brad Pitt. I mean, you know, let's be honest. I mean Brad Pitt. Brad who's Pitt's guy? not a sideline reporter. No, but I'm just saying uh-huh. on camera. Uh huh. Like you could pick who's the guy who was in the movie Sideways with the big jaws. Giamatti. Giamatti. I mean Giamatti. Giamatti's Paul a Giamatti. decent. Paul Giamatti's a decent <laughs> actor. He's pro- he could be as good an actor as Brad Pitt, but he'll never be like the box yeah. office attraction Brad Pitt is because Brad Pitt is a handsome guy. Yeah. We want to see handsome people yeah. on, on camera. But like before... That's why I have like a podcast. Pre-game, before a football game, we're on the field two hours before the game. So, you know, we were talking about doing your makeup earlier. Okay, so you're doing that in some Holiday Inn in Tuscaloosa or whatever, <laughs> and then you're rushing to the game... You're on the field. You're tracking down coaches, asking, like, what's your field goal target line? Uh, how's the wind affecting the kicking game? Uh, how's the rain going to affect how aggressive you are with your quarterback? So you're, you're tracking. You're getting information last minute on the field. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, we're, Olivia, we're coming to you. You're going to do a quick hit for Sports Center, And so we're still an hour before the game. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me quickly make sure everything's good. Let me re-powder. Let me re-gloss. And then kind of be like, okay, yeah, he set up. Okay, yeah, and... Yeah. Okay, and then you know, yeah, it's no a one lot else of work. That. No, yes. it's a lot of work. Yes, it is. And it's a lot of research that a lot it's of people lot of, don't know. It's about. a lot of work to look good on TV. I gotta say, that's it is exhausting. That is exhausting, but it's also a lot of research you have to do. Yes, about the sport, especially football. Football, football. It's very, it's crazy to me that football players are the most stereotyped as being stupid. When it's you have to be the smartest to play football. It's Football's so, a very complex sport. So complex. Yeah. And you have to memorize so many plays. Yeah. And so many options and think on your feet and and um and if you're reporting on football, there's so many things you gotta memorize and players you gotta memorize. Mm-hmm. And if you're telling their whole story, there's a lot of research you gotta do. Mm-hmm. So you have to be a very hard uh, worker and do a lot of research to do reporting. Yeah, and yeah. throughout the week as you're crafting a story, anyone can read a story online and then regurgitate it on air. Yeah. That's the laziest reporters. You always want to advance it. So you read a great story and you're like, oh, that's interesting. This is how this kid grew up and he dealt with this and blah, blah, Okay, then call their high school. Get on the phone. Call their high school coach. Ask about that. Call their guidance counselor at their school. I've done that. Like, do legwork. Find that kid. Yes. Ask their ask their uh, sports information director. Can I grab him on the phone for just a little bit on Wednesday? Do you do all that? Yeah. Th- that's advance real reporting. Yeah. yeah, I like that. That's real reporting. That's the way reporters used to be. Now reporters are very lazy. You don't know that. No, I'm not saying sports. Okay. Sports, you have to be. The funny thing is, the, the, you know what the ironic, not ironic, but yeah, it is kind of ironic. The, the funny thing is sports reporters are very good because sports fans are very into it. Yeah. And know, and call, and if you can't fuck up, like you yeah. said, because like sports fans know when you fuck up oh, or yeah. you have a lot of bad takes or whatever. I'm talking about the real media has gotten very lazy. And very sensationalist. Yeah. And they don't go out in the field anymore. They don't do though. They don't add to it. They don't check sources. I mean, even like articles have been written That's about also comedy. Not true. It That's is very such true. Such a generalization. No, it is true. Fake news. No. It's all fake news. No. Um, no, I'm telling. <laughs> there's been articles written about comedy where like, I was in an article. Yeah. I was in an article. I'm a well. Whatever they said about you was, was true. true. Yeah, <laughs> but I was in an article. They put there was an article. I was my name was in it twice, and nobody called me for a quote. Nobody called me for anything, or That's you know. And then they published it. It was like the New Republic, and they're getting sued now. You're getting sued, and not by me, but by somebody else. It was the the reporter is some fucking kid. Yeah. Who wrote it? It got published by the New Republic. They said something about a comedy club owner. 
And um, it was like a, it ended up being a fake source that was given it to him. It was some kid posing oh. to be somebody else who was feeding this reporter. That does happen. Fake, yeah. And yeah. This, they're suing the New Republic now. And it's like, and my name's in that article. And it's like, nobody contacted me. And I'm yeah. being characterized as, I'm reading this. I'm going like, <laughs> what the fuck is, they call, in one article I'm called right-wing media. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm a liberal kid. I mean, what are you talking about? And I'm a fucking comic. And you're going, it's like, uh, and it was Pace Magazine, nobody gives a shit about it. But still, if you Google my name. That comes up. It's in there down low, because nobody gives a shit, but I'm still like, <laughs> what do I do? Like, who do you, how do you fix that? Like, I DM Pace Magazine, and I was like, yeah, I was like, excuse down. me, but they didn't <laughs> respond or anything like that. I think it's gotten a little lazier because of the digital era. People can Google a lot. And you, you are on a deadline and you got to post something fast. And there's so much competition to get there fast yeah. because it's not about like being published in the newspaper anymore. Yeah. It's about being first online to get to the story first and get the clicks first and yes. get that ad revenue first. I always say I'd rather be right than fast. That's good, OHD. Thanks. I respect you. Thanks. I respect <laughs> you. And um, yeah, what sports, sports reporters are really like still doing that. Yeah. Because if they don't, they get called on their shit. Being a sports reporter is really tough for a game, if you're a game reporter, because nothing's taped, everything's live, and you know you prep all week for that one game. And I mean, it's it's a lot of legwork. Uh, you know, people do not understand the no. pressure of live. And you mentioned people call you out. So let's say I have Illinois at Nebraska. Okay, I'm... I had another two teams the week before. I've got another two teams the week after this. So if I mispronounce a kid's name, even though we scour it going over, truly as a group, we'll sit down with their SID at the university and say, What's okay, SID? is it, what is it SID? a sports information director? Uh, yeah. They're they're like our liaison. Uh -huh. And we'll go over every pronunciation, but sometimes it just still happens. And people are like, how dare you? His name is blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, look, you know how many names are going through right now? And we're, we're doing two different teams last week, two the next week. Right. It's... It's a lot of names. Yeah, I mean, think about that. Jesse, even, like, they can't even mispronounce a name. Like, if you mispronounce a name, especially in this era with the yeah. internet, you'll get torn apart on Twitter. Yeah. There'll be memes about it. Like, do you know how many times I mispronounce things on my po podcast? I mispronounce, <laughs> like, I started right there. When you listen to a reporter or even someone calling a game, like your dad or, even, or like you, uh, you guys nail it. And you nail it live. Not always. But for the most part, yeah. you rarely see a mistake well, on the you. good ones. Well, let me just say, too, as we're talking about this of, oh, it's so hard and it's so much work and all this, I've got to say I always felt like, and not to be cheesy here, but what a privilege that I'm talking about a running back who's having a great game and not bullets flying my, over my head in Syria. You know what I mean? Like yes. I'm not talking about anything that is truly going to – negatively affect someone. In fact, if I'm, I even try to ease up when I'm saying someone's having a bad game. Like right. I, th th they're trying, you know, they're, no one's, that's what my husband always says. He's like, if I miss a basket, people are like, how dare you, blah, blah. He's like, you think I'm wanting to miss that basket? That's my livelihood. That's my career. Like I want me to make that basket more than you do. Right. And like sports, sports fans are, they're great. They're very fanatical. And it's tough, and it's tough having my dad, my grandpa, me and my husband all in this industry to where people are watching your every little move. People are always trying to catch you, um, and it's really unfair. I mean, you you would like to think if you're just more or less a, a good person, you know, and I, I strongly believe everyone in my family is – that you'd stay above any fray and you don't. Right. You don't. They'll still they'll still try to get you on something. They'll make up something. They'll call you what they'll call you on that magazine. You just made me feel like really uh spoiled because comics always complain. Comic we're so spoiled. Comics get a free pass. Yeah, and and when we don't, we complain. We're like, <laughs> I was just joking. So what I stabbed your mom. It was a joke. <laughs> Leave me alone. It's like we're we're under no pressure. Yeah. Um, but now we've come to come under a little scrutiny. And we complain because we want we want to just be free to say whatever, but we're yeah. spoiled. You got yeah you you make any little mistake like yeah you, that's a lot of pressure. It's a yeah. lot of pressure, and and a lot of people that because I I had a sports show too before our show, and it's a lot. They put a lot of pressure on you. Like yeah. and I we were we were a comedy show, and sports comedy is hard to do. Ours is kind of a comedy show too. But we're yeah, and ours is. But when we have a guest on, it's yeah. like you got to be careful. Yeah, you can't just if they're still playing, you can't re like they can't yeah, say anything. Right. Mm -hmm. It um the it's fun though when you get the retired ones on there and they're like fuck Goodell and you're like yeah let it fly and we've never had a guest nobody say fuck Goodell but you can tell their sediment is there. okay yeah okay. 
Um, not really, but they're a little freer yeah. is my point. But honestly, like from, okay, so this is our family business is sports and it comes with its challenges. And I, there are times I've seen stuff on Twitter about anyone in my family and it's heartbreaking. There's st- times I've seen stuff about myself that I'm like, what kind of heartbreaking things do you see? Well, <laughs> <laughs> anything in particular, just like mean stuff. Just mean stuff. And yeah. like, I get really defensive about my husband. Um, and we've talked about this on the show too. I kinda, like you're loyal. I, well, I am, yes. and because my husband's so worth defending. Like, I I can't stress this enough of just like good people. Like, I'll say something and I'll be like, oh, you know, I'll say something sassy. You have or a heart. You're funny. tearing up right I now. I am tearing up. And you're tearing up. And Sam Sam doesn't say you des- a- every time you watch Real Housewives <laughs> and you tune out, you deserve it. You deserve it, girl. <laughs> Mental break, emotional break, tune out. Now I get it. Now get I know it. why women watch it. I'm freaking tired. Yeah. <laughs> She's crying right now. I wasn't uh, prepared for this. I just, if, if no, I felt I like it. Sam was a bit of a dippy who at times I'm like, oh boy, he, he did it again. Right. I, I wouldn't. I'd be like, you know, you do you. I, I'm, I'm going to take care of me and my public perception. But Sam so deserves, like, I don't want to say benefit of the doubt, but like if someone says something bad about Sam, which they have, and I have come on Twitter and defended him just because I would any time. Like, and again, just to kind of finish that, like if I say something that's a little, uh, I, I don't know, just catty or just something, not, he'll be like, oh, come on. Like Sam's such, he's so good. He's so pure. Like he makes me such a better person because he'll kind of like, He'll just you. You don't mean that, or like that's hey, stay in your lane. Let's worry about ourselves. He's he's that guy. Yeah, Sam's as good as they come. And then I get very defensive if anyone implies otherwise. Cause... That was a, I love this moment. Thank you. He um he uh recently when he um when they were making the final roster for the Raptors, he gave a beautiful yeah press conference where he was talking about how if other people make the team and he doesn't make the team that he, and it, you could tell it was genuine yeah now i'm getting emotional <sighs> he's a good kid <laughs> he's a good he's kid. a fucking great guy uh, Sam, i'm actually getting for cleft right now i don't want to cry on my own show but he said a very heartfelt yeah now i'm tearing up i know he was like he's like i don't want to be that guy he's like i don't want to be that guy who's upset about someone else and, and he's the not way rooting he's, for someone else to lose their job not, yeah and he's like i'm not rooting for someone i don't want to be that and he, he made he made it you look at yourself going like yeah why would i do that yeah like why would i do that and i get to live with this guy yeah. i mean he truly he he makes me better but watching him overseas the last two years do we have some music to cue at that point like Ooh. maybe no, it's I like believe testing. I can fly. No, we can't. He's he pisses on girls. Do we have a pure <laughs> song we can play? We, we definitely got to play some. No, you know what it is. But I got to tell you, OHD, you got to stay. You can't respond to those people on Twitter. They're trolls. Well, you can't respond to them. Not not Joe Schmo. I won't respond to Joe Schmo. Um, but I will respond if it's like another reporter or a former teammate. Oh, you had some devil in your eyes, girl. <laughs> Wow! Yeah. I just yeah. saw you were like, that was like yeah. I'll defend my own. That was yeah. a woman. That was a fucking if it's female mother bear. You came out and the cub happened to be there, <laughs> and you were in trouble, my friend. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. That was fucking yeah. defense. Yeah. Yeah. No, so he former just... teammate. You'll go up to that six five six seven six seven. No, I didn't say in person. I said oh, on Twitter. Person. On Twitter. Okay. <laughs> you listen, sir. <laughs> You listen. Yeah, you come down here you and you talk to me. You come down here and talk. And I bet you go, yes, ma'am, I apologize, ma'am. No, I did. I, I went to bat for him one time. Um, if, if you Google my name, that's probably one of the first things that comes up. I went to bat Google for him it, one Jesse. time when he really, really deserved it. And my husband's such a class act. And he was like, I'm not going to say anything. And I said, well, I am. Because this isn't right. And um, now, now, I mean, now we're getting into the whole story. But it's... Uh, we want to hear it. It just... I don't know. And I don't, I don't want to get too much into this. Well, we'll Google it. Okay. <laughs> so you're a very loyal woman. <laughs> and it, it, sometimes the media gets carried away with some of these yes. things. Um, I know of one particular thing. I won't mention anything. Yeah. But obviously, then the the person said, I didn't say he said. And yeah. so it's like, so why is this even a... Why did the media make this even a story? And I think I get involved also because I am a part of the media. Right. And... 
that comes with its challenges, but also like I am, I'm blue check marked. I'm a certifiable source. I cover sports for a living. So at the end of the day, when it's fact or fiction, yeah, I will, I will do that. Um, probably I would like to think regardless if it was a family member or not, but when it's my husband who, as I've said, is just like, as like almost annoyingly pure, like just wants no harm to no person. And yeah. And when, when there's something like that, that comes up, um, even if he says, just don't say anything, just don't say, I'm like too bad. I'm already drafting a tweet. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's, it's wrong. And for the sake of the right thing being right, I am going to defend you because you deserve it. Like it's so unfair to come after someone so good. There's so many bad people out there. Why would someone who like truly hasn't done a bad thing ever like have to, you know? Yes. And uh, I think I maybe I spoke too soon when I said sports media is <laughs> doing better better than the regular media because we didn't talk we didn't uh, talk about this. Yeah, um, I don't know if it's because of the internet, this race to get first. I think it has something to do with it, like where rumors catch on and then that becomes fact, and yeah. you know it just moves so fast before the truth gets out, and then everyone accepts it, and then other reporters pile on. The Twitter pylons like a thing now. Yeah, pylons on stories, and then so, and then somebody in the corner going, "Wait, wait, wait! None of that's true, but it's already too late." There's that old expression that a lie travels faster than the truth. Yeah. So, so this is an example of that kind yeah. of. Um, so I maybe I spoke too soon. There's some bad reporters in sports journalism as well. The thing that frustrates me is there's no consequences. You're so right. That's what I hate about it. Uh-huh. Like And in cancel culture, it's like, well, let's cancel the poor reporting. Yes, let's cancel <laughs> the poor reporting. Yeah. They they act with futility. Like, um, even with this article I'm talking about in comedy, um, they amend they wrote an amendment at wow. the end, right? So they said this is after everyone's already read it, probably. Sure. Everyone's already read and it. By the in way, the industry. they're not reading the Nobody's correction. Going, yeah, and then there's a correct. <laughs> okay. Now, you, if you go to the article, yeah. right, it's in the New Republic. You can just Google it. What's it called? Uh, Comedy has an alt right problem, is the <laughs> article by some kid who lives in his mom's house in Idaho. <laughs> um, did a lot of field. He didn't even go in a comedy club and he wrote this article. <laughs> but anyway, um, so he, that was the name of the article. And my name's not in that. My name's in that as. The guy who's accused who, that it ended up being false. Yeah, he owns the club, wow. so my name's in it be, as like he manages people like, and he yeah. put my name in there. He, uh, my name, so my name's only in there that way. That yeah. this guy used to. But name. still implying that. But you're my shady. name's still in. Yeah. If you Google it, my, yeah. my you can Google Giannis and you'll see the alt right article come up. And if you're lazy and don't read the article, yeah. you'll see that my name's just in there as like managed by. But Most anyway, people read the headline. That's the headline. And anyway, the article's been read already, and it's completely <laughs> false, and it's been proven to be false. That's horrible. And my old manager is suing. Yeah. He's suing the as New Republic. Should. As he should. But all they did was put a retraction at the end, being like, this this came out, so the, the source was false. And and my, my manager's going, no, you have to take, you have to write a complete article retraction yeah. and an article about how that article What's cannot wrong? be trusted. It's false. And so that's where they at right now. They're, they're at in the litigation. Wow. Um, but... Yeah, it's not fair. Like the kid and the kid's still writing. It's like, yeah, it's like, where's the canceling of him as a reporter? Yeah, you can't just do that. No. That's people's reputations. Yeah. It's like absurd. There has to be consequences for that type of egregious flaw. And in a reporting. reputation is very fragile. It's hard to repair because yeah. people don't look at the Duke Lacrosse, the du like the Duke Lacrosse story. Yeah. I know you're nervous, but let's just be I am nervous. Yeah, but here's the deal. You're only nervous because <laughs> because of what it, it what what it con connotes mm -hmm. in popular culture. Mm -hmm. Those guys, it was a complete lie. Yeah. It was a complete lie. And even at comedy shows, if you see four or five wh white guys sitting there, you'll like, you know, Joe, you'll go like, "What are you what is this the Duke Lacrosse team?" You know, and like everyone laughs like, "Haha," meaning like, you know, they're you know, they're whatever <laughs> bad people. But um I'm, I don't know who they were personally, but they didn't do that. Yeah. That whole story was yeah. a lie. But, you know, everyone yeah. attaches them to that story, and a lot of people don't even know. Most people don't even know that it was all a lie. I'll tell it you why. True. It's People were very simple, and there's so much stupid. We're to very stupid. bring in all the time. So for us to very easily classify people, good, bad, uh, smart, dumb, rapist, non-rapist, racist, non-racist. Like t we have to put these people in these very clean boxes that an accusation 
you can't take it back because we're we've moved on. Where's it? Nope, they're a rapist. <laughs> there, there's no way they're not. Right. Yeah. 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 It's um, people struggle with nuance. Yeah. They struggle with three dimensions. They want to make everything a comic book, and it's gotten worse. It's a failure of public education. We could go down a whole rabbit hole. <laughs> I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. What do you love most about working with me? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great question. Yeah. Like, I, I have said this to my friends and family. I have never had more fun working than I am now. And I mean that so sincerely. Like, this was a major career pivot for me, leaving the network and kind of the network of all networks and uh, go out on a limb to go into the betting space, which my agent said, you don't want to be catching up to this in a couple of years because this is where the industry is going. Mm -hmm. And you know me, I, I come from such a traditional background. We were talking about this last night. I said, I thought I'd be a sideline reporter forever. I mean, you were walking with a book on your head when you were young. Yeah. 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 You're, you're not messing around. You got a blazer on. I don't know if you're running for office or what's going on. You're <laughs> no, a straight edge is, girl. This is yeah. just my skin. Yeah. <laughs> just my second <laughs> layer of skin. Um, yeah, no, I, I am. I'm, I'm pretty straight laced. I, I don't think I'm a total square, but I can. You're not a total square. Okay. You like to do. Phew. You like to do shots. We did. <laughs> we we drank. We we did like those senior swankies, like frozen diabetes drinks in Vegas. In Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Afterwards, oh. I was like, I I felt di. I needed insulin. Yeah. 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 No, and, and I think anyone in Athens, Georgia from like 2011 to 2014 would confirm I'm not a square. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I. I just always thought I'd stick with traditional journalism and you know, I have no idea what my future holds, but I do think this adds a really good layer to my overall conception and understanding of sports, how people consume sports, why people consume sports and gambling is just a big part of it. Um, and again, I always kind of thought it was like this kind of icky thing we don't touch. Um, but it's not, it's, it's when done responsibly, it's great. It's fun. And yeah. I got to say, I'm even now like sprinkling money on games and I'm like, this is so fun. It makes me care about games I otherwise wouldn't care about. Yes. Uh, it's just, it, it helps traditional media. More people are watching games. Do you think that this is going to lead to corruption in sports? That's what I'm concerned about. Or was that always there? I mean, there's, there's no, in my opinion, there's no way Michael Jordan didn't bet on himself a few times. <laughs> There's no way, especially uh, when you consider that he could bet. I know you can't say anything, but especially <laughs> since you could, he could bet on himself and just do the points, yeah. the spread, like win by that extra challenge. The kid liked to gamble. I would say there's a zero percent chance. I would go zero percent chance that that hasn't happened. I'm not going to single out Michael Jordan, although we all know he did it because he's ultra. He gambled with everything. He would yeah. gamble all the time. But players probably do. I mean, I just watched this documentary about uh, the scandal. Um, was it Arizona State point shaving with yeah. that? Uh, what was his name? Headache. I don't watch it. Uh, you should see it. Yeah. ASU. It's a, it was like '94, and he was point shaving. Yeah. And um, it's had I. I do you think the acceptance of gambling, because obviously that it's been a tornado. It's just like oh yeah, they're huge. they're everywhere now. Yeah. BetMGM, it's everywhere. Do you think that'll lead to more? Or do you think less? Or because it, 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 what's your, what's your thoughts on that? Well, kind of the school of thought is if you legalize anything, it takes away the scumminess of it. You know what I mean? If legalize marijuana, so now you don't have creepy drug dealers in the street. It's I mean, if you got to think of it that way, it's. Um, and most people do do these things responsibly. Most yeah. people do do them. Yeah. Even prostitution, <laughs> which I know you can't comment on, but I'll say <laughs> that should be legal. Why? It's going to happen anyway. Regulate it. Put it in a district or whatever. It's going to happen anyway. It's one of those things that like, people do it anyway. I know it's weird to say most people do it responsibly, but I think most people do do it responsibly. I think you're talking about just a few ugly businessmen who, you know, just, <laughs> you know, they're, uh, they're you know. Their wives got four kids. They're not so interested in giving them BJ's anymore, oh. and they got to get the poison out. You know, so you squeeze the glue gun, you get the poison out, and you go back home and you make cereal for your kids. Big fucking deal. Who am I to judge? I'm just saying it's gonna happen anyway. Keep you just want them to go to one block, one neighborhood, to do and it. tax the shit out of it. There's yeah. a lot of revenue yeah. there. Tax, it. tax the shit out of it, and then it takes away the criminality, the abuse, yeah. the pimps. Yeah. You know, you lose a lot of good rap music, but. <laughs> Girls won't be getting backhanded, and that's a good thing. 
Giannis, you always surprise me. I have a free mouth. I don't work for anybody, but yes, I'm a comedian. <laughs> we get away with murder. You do. We do. You do. It's ironic. We're kind of like the pretty girls. Like, we're kind of oh. like, I'm just a pretty girl. Don't leave me. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just said Michael Jordan definitely gambled, but hey. <laughs> I like your impression of pretty girl. Yeah, pretty girl, pretty girl. Titties, titties, titties. <laughs> I got big titties. <laughs> Uh, Wait, your poor microphone today has been a Wisconsin guy's beer belly. Yeah, now- I, I, I got a lot of ideas. <laughs> I feel bad for that microphone. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's it. So you're saying it, you're yeah. saying? I think it'll all be okay. I think it'll make everything cleaner. You think it'll make it cleaner? Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with but you. But I'm also very optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> you're optimistic, and we're both employed by it, so it's like. <laughs> It's cleaner, and uh, yeah. can't wait for their contract renegotiation because yeah. our show's doing pretty good. Yeah, what day is it? Tuesday? Yeah. <laughs> what day? No, is the I agree. Out? It's like it's happening anyway. Yeah. It's happening anyway, and it's not the worst thing when you remove the taboos and everything. Some people can't handle too much chicken. Some people can't handle uh-huh. too much steak. Yeah. Some people can't handle too much sugar. Yeah. So, like, we sell alcohol, and alcoholism is a huge problem. Yeah. We sell gambling. Right. And even food. Yeah, yeah. People, food is like, more, most more, most people die of too much food. Yeah. Their hearts give out not because they were gambling. Yeah. It's because they were having McDonald's four times a week. Ouch. Yeah, so betting four on a game. Is that what we're saying is too much? Four times. I forgot you were from the, America where there are no good restaurants. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> you said the other day Kansas City doesn't have a skyline, and that's just simply not true. Let's look up Kansas City skyline. Yeah, it's, it's going to yeah, it's gonna look like a block in Brooklyn. <laughs> okay. One block in Brooklyn. It's going to look like a block in Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's the one thing New York does have over every day. We just got better food than you guys got. Yeah. Well, now we've been spending time in Toronto, and the food in Toronto is really good. The food really in D.C., good. I'm headed there this afternoon. You, you went to college there. Food's great. You're a woman on the go. You're on a plane. You're on a train. Mm-hmm. You're in a makeup room. You're in a ba- you're in a bath stall at a <laughs> 7-Eleven putting yeah. that makeup on. You're on Twitter defending the ones you love. Yeah. You are OHD. Let them hear you roar. Yeah. Listen to us on Unleashed, uh, BetMGM. God damn it, I can't believe I'm doing Wait, this for free. And I, uh, I told you I had some news. I told you I was going to break news. news. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. But also, before we get to that, yeah. follow uh, Olivia Harlan Decker on Twitter, Instagram. She's absolutely great. I love her to death. I love working with her. We're having so much fun. It's the burgeoning of a new friendship. Yeah. And it's I'm getting emotional again. <laughs> no, not again. Damn it. And uh, just follow her. Um, she's great. Listen to our show. Listen to her on all the stuff she does on BetMGM because you do more than a lot. Well, way more yeah. than you. Way more than me. Um, so <laughs> check her out. Um, and uh, let's get to this breaking news. Yes. Okay. Breaking news. And I brought it with me. You're um, pregnant. I am. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're actually going to cry now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm going to cry This now. is so cute. That is incredible. Dad. I am pregnant. That we is incredible for my baby. And we haven't told anyone but family, so I really wanted to save the breaking news for that you. That is so nice. <laughs> what, Thank you. Want to hold my baby? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? It's incredible. Yeah. This is incredible. And you know, we were yesterday, Giannis, who has a one year old, was telling me, isn't that darling? Yeah. And my baby's going to be so How do you huge. accept this as a guy? How do you do it? No, like, it's not I'm, a gift I'm, for no, you. But I mean, like, no, but I mean, like, this is so nice. Like, I love it, oh. but like, I don't know how to show it. <laughs> Just hold it up. I want it's to cry. It's a six month size, this but I think so my nice. newborn will be that size. This is like, uh, this is like the nicest thing. Look at how cool that is. Isn't that? Yeah. You called it because I texted you today when you were asking me my breakfast order. Maybe that gave it away. And you said, I just don't know if I can fit in it, but I appreciate it. It's not a gift. Oh, it's not for me? No. Oh, I thought. Why would I give you a baby onesie? I'm joking, OHD. (laughs) (laughs) This is the nicest thing. Thank you so much. (laughs) It's not for you. It's for Gianna. It's for my little baby girl. No, but do you remember yesterday when we were standing And we're going to burn it because we're Knicks fans. What the fuck is this shit? And you said being a father, being a parent, was the best thing in the world. It is, yes. And I, and I said, oh, you know, a couple years away, because I wanted to surprise you today. Yes. Uh, and I'm three months pregnant. Yeah. Oh, so you are pregnant. You still think I'm kidding? Are you serious? I'm still serious. You said... Se- Giannis! Wait, is he joking or are you serious? No, I'm due May 14th. I'm legit pregnant. You can't oh, so this tell? Is, this is for your baby? <laughs> yes! This is not for Gianna? Oh my God. What's going on right now? I made a joke before you were pregnant. You said no. 
Well, yeah, because I was saving it for the show. Oh my God, you're pregnant. You still think I'm pregnant? <laughs> Giannis, I know. Congrats. Are you so surprised? I am very surprised. You can't tell us that? No, I just thought you were in the Wisconsin area. I was Wisconsin at the game. <laughs> yeah. I thought you just eating cheese curds. Congrats. I have been eating a lot of cheese curds. Yeah, I've never been <laughs> oh more my hungry God. in my life. Congratulations. Actually, you know when I first found out? Yeah. Right before our Vegas trip? So I was faking. You didn't drink anything. I did. You liar! You would get me drunk. Yeah. You could get liar and can't trust you. Like so, so you were we, just pushing it back in there. Yeah, and then kind of pouring some out. And remember, I asked for only one shot instead of two. Yes. I don't know if you remember that. You bought the daiquiris. So. I did buy the daiquiri. You owe me seventeen forty-seven. I think I do owe you seventeen forty-seven. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, but this is for Gianna. No, no it's, it's not. For, so where's Gianna's? Gianna's won. This is six months. Oh, that's true. And it says, this is for my new That was so baby. funny that I had no, I thought it was for Gianna. <laughs> I know. I was very confused by your reaction. Yeah, but that's because yeah. you t- lied to me again and told me you weren't pregnant. You saved it for the show. Yeah, because I don't do anything right, if it's not on camera. let me hold it again now. Okay. Oh my God, you're pregnant. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I thought your reaction was weird. Well, because I, like, I thought, because I didn't think you were pregnant because you lied to me again. You lied to me about the daiquiris and you lied to me. I, before I made the joke, you were pregnant. You could have said, I am pregnant, but we're going to make it on the show. We'll do it on the show. No, But then it wouldn't real. have been a genuinely confusing uh, reaction. Yeah, this has been very confusing. Very confusing. <laughs> that, I, that is so nice. Thank you. Yes, I can't yeah. believe it. So I guessed it right is what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah, so this goes back Give to me you. my baby back. Yeah, it's okay because we're Nick's fans anyways. <laughs> But uh, that is incredible. Thank you. That kid is going to be huge, huge, kind, Aww. smart, have great parents. A little sassy on Twitter. And hopefully we'll save you a little money. A little sassy on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And hopefully save you a little money uh, for college. Because if that, that kid's yeah. not going to be a lick under 6'5". No. You're 5'8"? I'm 5'8". Five 5'8". Eight. Five eight. Your Sam husband six is 6'9". Six nine. And Sam was the most giant baby. Yeah. So I really don't know what I got myself into. Adoption should have been an option. Yeah. They better get a crane to get that kid out. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Sam, congratulations. I know you're not watching this because this is like, this is a scummy show for you. You're a pure hearted kid. I'm sure. Yeah. What a great way for my kid to come out. (laughs) Yeah. What a great place to make the announcement. But no, I'm very, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you did it on my show. That's well, very nice. Just Saturday, I, I turned three months, which is kind of when you can start saying it. So yeah. I thought, I'm going to say it on the show. I'm going to save it for Giannis. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. This was like, I'm positive this was going to, fans are going to love this. This was a fun show. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking we were maybe just put it on the Patreon because it would be a snoozer. But it ended up hey! being amazing. Hey! I cried. Kidding. Now you know why I'm so emotional. No, this was, this was actually an amazing I'm crying show. about my baby daddy. I'm not you, crying about my husband. Yeah, no, you just got crazy women chemicals in you. <laughs> yeah, I do. You got I do. Yeah. Have you been eating weird like pickles and shit? Like, no, but I've weird... been eating everything in sight. Yeah. I've been starving. That's why you're wolfing down those chicken fingers. Well, easy. I was like, I, yeah, we were at the game and I was like, this girl's got a great metabolism. She's like, bow, 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 bow. <laughs> but that was pregnancy when you were like, you took some out of mine and you were like. And you know, I didn't get a beer at the game. You didn't get a beer. Yeah. You got just double chicken fingers. I just you're eating for two. Up. Yeah, and you got a big baby in you, so you're going to be eating a lot. <laughs> you're making me want to button my blazer. Sam, <laughs> let me give you a little advice, Sam. Yeah. Okay. You're going to get a lot of weird, strange requests. Oh. My wife would do things like, can you just hold my feet? Okay, so she would, I would just hold, hold them. I would hold her foot. She would just put her foot. Yeah, you're going to, you're, because you have a baby growing in you right yes, now. Yes. Yeah. You're like a mutant. Yeah. You're like, there's something living off no, of you. It's freaky. So, like, you're chem- like, women are like mortal gods. Yeah. I, like, watching my wife get pregnant and give birth gave me, like, a level of respect. It's beyond respect. It's awe. Aww. You're just in awe. You're like, yeah. holy shit. And so it's like, and then watching the birth is like the craziest thing. Did you, you, you watch it I all? watched the whole thing. Ooh. I watched the, what is that called? The, the crazy people Placent- eat it. Placenta. Yeah, yeah everything. I yeah. saw the whole thing. Yeah. None of it bugged me out. Wow. And I'm usually a little bugged out by that. I mean, my baby shit on my wife as soon as it came out. Shit I, right on her. And I was just like, wow. I've also heard the opposite happening. She could shit inside, yeah. <laughs> No, oh. that the wife, the the lady giving birth, the Can goddess too. giving birth. That happens too. There's shit and blood everywhere. It's I not know. pretty. The funny thing is, it's not pretty. And it, there's, it's a nature. It nature. It's all nature. Yeah. Because you look in like nothing. It's like the most primal thing we do. And it's like incredible. Yeah. It's like holy. It was just incredible. And I was standing there. My wife was in labor for hours, and I was standing holding her leg for hours. And it's that thing. It didn't feel like hours. It was like because I was wow. so in awe. I was taking in this like incredible, and then the baby comes out and like, 
it, you can't explain. It's a, the thing most people say is like you can't explain what it yeah. feels like. You can't explain the love you have for the kid. It Ugh. can't be explained. And then it, it brings people say like it, you, you oh you love the baby more than your wife. It brings the, everything more together because yeah. now I'm like. I love this thing that's also my wife, so yeah. it made me love my wife more. Yeah, it made I me love that. us more. It's like, it's just like, it's uh. funny because you realize like, oh, we're just, that's the meaning of life. It's like yeah. we're no different than cockroaches or or bug. everything that reproduces is like making a kid is yeah. like the most fulfilling thing in the world. But here's my advice to Sam. You will get weird requests because you're going to get weird and you don't, you're, it's what happens. I've been very normal so far, I will it, say. We, only three months. Okay. It gets, when you start getting a little heavy, my wife would go, hold my foot. She would go, just hold my foot. So I go, what do you mean hold your foot? She would just hold my foot. And so I would just hold her foot and then I'd like start massaging it and she'd go, no. Just hold it. Just hold it. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, I just hold it. I said hold. And I'm like, why? And she's like, I don't know. That's funny. <laughs> and she just liked me holding her foot. And then she would go like, I need mozzarella sticks. Yeah. And I'd be like, what do you mean? And I'd be like, we don't have any mozzarella sticks. She would go, I need mozzarella sticks. Yeah, I know we don't have them. Yeah. She's like, go find <laughs> mozzarella sticks. And I'd be like, what? There's no, it's, it's three in the morning. And she would like, I need mozzarella sticks. So, and like her voice changed. She was like, where do you get me in? fucking mozzarella sticks. 3 a.m. in Westchester. Where do you, you just get? like, I'd have to go to like a gas station and find mozzarella. Like she, the, <laughs> the, the, the food cravings are real. Yeah. The food aversions are real. There were certain things that like she loved that just grossed her out. God. And like other things that she normally hated. Because like it's, it's like a, maybe what the baby likes. I don't even, it's, it's like mystical. Crazy. She started eating things or maybe like what the but nature knows you need to give the baby, like yeah. calcium or whatever it is, and then you start craving those like foods. Like if you're craving a steak, you're probably short on iron. Short on iron. Yeah. It's like wild shit yeah. like that because mm-hmm. you're you're nurturing something yeah. in you. Um, and then the baby starts kicking and stuff. You're like, Crazy. You're like as a, it's funny because women are like handle it good. As a dude, you, you really feel how stupid dudes are when that happens because dudes are like, we turn into like Bill and Ted's Excellent <laughs> Adventure. We're like, whoa <laughs> that's fucking wild because you see like a foot going no it's scary like you know the baby's in there but then when you see when you, you feel like you're not going to see the body until it's out you see but it. the body's in there You've, and Move. you start feeling it and seeing it before Crazy. and my wife would go Ee! she'd giggle and I'd be like before she'd be like oh Gigi's kicked me I'm like you have a, you're a, you're a crazy you're a, you have a person in your body yeah it's like having an alien in your house oh my god so we're it's, gonna find out the gender in a couple weeks and I'm really excited for you that. won't find out the gender until, until she She's about us. 10, and then she will tell you. She will say, Mommy, Daddy, I am a zooby dooby. Gender reveals are like kind of controversial now. It's like, why? Gender are reveals you... are so boomer. So I guess I, I just, I want to find, I guess you say, I want to find out the sex. Yeah, you want to find out the sex and, you know, yeah, the gender. Okay, I want to know the gender. You do what you do, what you do in the Decker house. And you know, if it's a girl, I'm going to do pink everything. If it's a boy, I'm going to do blue everything. You call do. me basic. Call me old fashioned. You are a basic bitch. I want this kid to be whoever it wants to be, but when it's a little newborn baby, it's whoever I want it to be. Goddamn right. <laughs> your mom's OHD and yeah. you're going to be walking around with a book on your head. Oh, do you have any baby name recommendations that you think sounds good with Decker? Sam Jr. Because that could be boy or girl. Yeah. Sam Jr. Um, well, I told Decker. you Sam's initials. Uh, you know what's name that's that. name that's a little underrated? Um, uh, Stalin Decker? No, okay. that's He's got bad. That name's retired in the bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a good name, though. It means steel. Stalin. <laughs> Ruined a good name. Okay, let's stop uh, there. Yeah, we'll stop I think there. we'll ask someone uh, else for baby name advice. Charlotte. Charlotte Decker. You know, my sister-in-law wants to do Charlotte and call her Lottie. Lottie. So it's like girls do this. Girls put a claim on a name years before when they do, there's not even a boyfriend, there's no one in the picture, they and they'll can. say, just so everyone knows, I take this I love name. the name Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. So you'll do that even before anyone's pregnant. Yeah, yeah, girls do that. I've had a baby name list in my phone since like So what's your grade. name? So what are your names that you like? I'm not telling you. Okay, why not? You told I'm me you were telling. pregnant, and you told me yeah. we cried on my show. Yeah. I thought it was because you were getting emotional. You're just a crazy pregnant person I'm just right a now. Crazy pregnant person. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm thinking about the second half of my breakfast sandwich. Yeah, I should I order a pizza? Maybe. <laughs> I am. Oh my god, all I can think about is food. Yeah. Char- I like Charlotte, Cynthia. What's I, going on? You want to go Greek? Athena. Athena's a beautiful oh. name. Athena. And then everyone will think that our blonde blue baby's Greek. Yeah, they be blonde baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Athena's a beautiful name, though. It is. Um, uh, I want to think about. I want to. If you. Okay. Um, 
I love the idea of doing something with a D, so it's like da 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 Decker or something, you know? Da 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 Decker. Daniela. 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 Yeah, you say I it like that. Daniela. Like just how like, Denise? No. David? No, we have a lot of Davids. Yeah. Keep thinking. Shlomi? Probably Shlomi. <laughs> Uh, and, and only LeBron. If, yeah, LeBron. <laughs> LeBron. LeBron Decker. LeBron Decker. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations, Thank OHC. You. Thank I'm you. So you happy thought for I was you. kidding. That was the weirdest that reaction. That was a weird moment because you already told me. Hey, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. I thought it was for Gianna. You literally texted me this morning. You're pregnant. I said, haha, no, but I, I'll tell you some news. <laughs> right. I should see. I'm stupid. Yeah. I should have known. I was really stupid. But you know, no, you're a good liar. I am. Because why would I think you were pregnant if you were? Downing drink. You're the one who it was like your idea to drink the alcohol. I was like, let's go get let's daiquiris. go get these, and then you were fake drinking like a sociopath. And then we went to dinner that night with our with Maddie and, yeah. and Casey. And you ordered a drink. And I ordered a drink. I went to the restaurant early, and I told the hostess, I just found out I'm pregnant. Can I order a vodka soda, and you just bring a club soda? And they said, Yep, we'll tell your waitress. You are a classy yeah. wasp. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know how to just. Because yeah. you don't want to tell, I'd, I was like one weekend, you know? Yeah. You don't want to tell people then. Yes. Yeah. Congrats to you and Sam. Thanks. Sam, congratulations. The Decker family, congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations to all the Deckers. Another Decker, another Harlan is on the way. Wisconsin has another athlete. <laughs> yeah, sign him up for UW yeah. basketball right now. Yes. Thank you, OHD. Or her. Or her. Mm -hmm. Or Zuby. <laughs> or Shlomi. Or Shlomi. It's been a long time.